Anyway, later Anakin is summoned by Chancellor Palpatine to the opera he's watching. The comic doesn't show what the opera is, but the movie portrays some kind of weird Final Fantasy X blitzball bubble thing with creatures swimming between orbs of water. You know, Anakin, I was once the star player of the Xanarkin Daves. Palpatine continues trying to sway Anakin to his way of thinking, knowing full well that the Jedi have asked him to spy for them. All those who gain power are afraid to lose it. Even the Jedi. The Jedi use their power for good. Good is a point of view, Anakin. For instance, some would say that this opera we're watching is good. Trust me, it is not. The Jedi point of view is not the only valid one. The Dark Lords of the Sith believe in security and justice also, yet they are considered by the Jedi to be evil. Yeah, but you don't see the Jedi trying to create as many doomsday weapons as the Sith, so I think one side is leaning more on the evil scale. Yet the Sith and the Jedi are similar in almost every way, including their quest for greater power. The difference between the two is that the Sith are not afraid of the dark side of the Force. That is why they are more powerful. Palpatine attempting to use the both sides mind trick. Anakin counters that the Sith rely on self-interest for their strength, whereas the Jedi are meant to be selfless. The fear of losing power is a weakness of both the Jedi and the Sith. You know, I joked about the opera being bad, but Palpatine summoned Anakin here to have a philosophical debate with him instead of watching it, so it can't be that good. And thus it's time for the scene that many cite as possibly the best of the entire prequel trilogy. Or at the very least, even if they hate the prequels, it's still one of the few good things to come out of it. Have you ever heard the tragedy of Darth Plagueis? He thought you could treat midi-chlorians with antibiotics. It didn't go well. He was a Dark Lord of the Sith. So powerful and wise, he could use the Force to influence the midichlorians to create life. Unfortunately, the only thing he created were bees that smelled like gasoline. He wasn't very good at it. He had such knowledge of the dark side that he could even keep the ones he cared about from dying. A fancy way of saying he was rich and could afford good health care. He could actually keep someone safe from death. He taught his apprentice everything he knew, and then his apprentice killed him in his sleep. Plagueis never saw it coming. I noticed the comic omits that he was nicknamed Darth Plagueis the Wise. Good call there. He could save others from death, but not himself. Is it possible to learn this power? Not from a Jedi. Although there are tutorials on WikiHow. The Darth Plagueis scene is dripping in atmosphere, and it's a nice change in tactics for manipulation. Anakin is beginning to teeter on the edge of the dark side as he feels like he's being pulled between Palpatine and the Jedi. So this scene shows a different, subtler approach to pushing Anakin after it seems like the the Sith and the Jedi are the same thing approach seems to fall flat, reminding him of his fear of Padme dying. It's also one of the few scenes in any Star Wars movies that we actually get any insight into the Sith beyond their bad guy who use the dark side. It's not a lot, but it shows something. Bear in mind, the word Sith is never used in the original trilogy. This was the first real chance for the movies, which I remind you is pretty much the only thing the majority of viewers will ever watch to get into the long time opposite of the Jedi. It's not a lot, but anything is nice. I like that we're not certain if Palpatine was Plagueis' apprentice, or if this was just indeed a story he knew. Forget the expanded universe stuff that went into detail. Let this scene be as a movie where you're in Anakin's shoes and you're not quite sure about this stuff either. I also like that while it's implied that this may have been how Anakin was created, they don't confirm it. I don't like the Anakin as virgin birth thing. I'm pretty sure that was done just so they didn't need to have some family lineage about Luke's grandfather or anything. But implying some Dark Lord of the Sith created an artificial pregnancy in a random woman in the desert is detestable and icky on so many levels, especially in an all-ages franchise, and we really didn't need that as fact in the universe. And no, I don't care what some comic says about it. It's better if we don't know. The virgin birth thing is even more ridiculous because it turns Anakin from some tragic tale of a guy who was seduced by the dark side into the most super special awesomest most important guy ever. But yeah, the Plagueis scene is arguably the best scene in any of the prequels. But unfortunately, while it is the best scene, it still has some problems. 
See, once again, Lucas's failures as a writer rear their ugly head. Just the signs that there weren't enough drafts, revisions, or script editors who looked at this and found the contradictions or confusing parts, or made him alter something so it would fit better with what he was saying. The tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise is not actually that big of a tragedy. The implication is it's a tragedy because of his overwhelming desire to keep the people around him from dying, but Palpatine doesn't say he was obsessed with keeping people from dying. Maybe he was just a smart guy who could extend life or rejuvenate it. That's not tragic, that's cool. Hell, we don't even know what keep the ones he cared about from dying actually means. Did his cousin get chopped in half and he kept them alive through sheer willpower? Does he have his best friend's head in a jar that he keeps alive? Or does he mean, like I suggested, that he could stop old age from killing them? There's a lot of wiggle room there. Mind you, the movie has one thing going for it that the comic, for whatever reason, left out. The dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. That implies the power is like necromancy or something, and it's creepy as all hell, but again, the vagueness doesn't help. But yeah, that's all the story is. A dude has a cool power, his apprentice learned it, and then killed him. That's not a tragedy, that's a Tuesday for the Sith. The other problem is, like so much else, the line delivery. Not during Palpatine's explanation of the legend itself, but right before it. Anakin's supposed to still be torn, but his reactions to things like Palpatine saying, I think the Jedi are going to try to take over the Republic, elicits the same emotional response as if he just learned a TV show he liked got preempted by a half hour. It's not helped by Palpatine's own underplaying of the whole thing. Sure, of course he's not actually worried about any of this, but when you say the guys who can telekinetically lift the entire Senate chamber and crumple it like a piece of paper are gonna stage a coup, maybe you should express a little concern to keep up the act? I'll grant you that Anakin's not really thinking straight right now, which is why he probably doesn't pick up on the guy who he has been warned seems to be surrounded by the dark side is now openly talking about how he knows things about the dark side and all that, but it seems like he should be at least a little suspicious of this. 